For these five Dunlap High School students, looking at pictures they took during an art class photography trip to Chicago now is about more than assessing their work. It brings back memories of their scary, icy ride in December on the interstate on the charter bus returning from that trip. We were kind of saying it was looking bad out. We, you know, there were cars everywhere. It was getting kind of icy. So anyway, I mean, we figured we should probably drive slow and everything, but we didn't actually think we were going to get in a crash. And then I look out the window and I see the semi-truck, like, 100 yards ahead of us. I'm like, that semi-truck stopped. So I'm like, he better slow down. And he's, uh, he wasn't slowing down. He kept going. And I was like, oh, snap. So I started, like, shaking Hannah. And as we got to a point to where I knew we were going to hit it, I was yelling and screaming and... I braced myself, which I probably shouldn't have done because it ended up breaking my thumb on the seat, but um, I braced myself and we just hit it full on and I saw it, and then it was pitch black. There was like no light at all and it was just like really scary at that moment. I was sitting in the middle of the bus. I didn't hear anybody gasp. I didn't see anything. I just remember hearing this huge loud crunch and then being thrown forward. The bus carrying about 50 students ended up sliding into a semi-truck that had jackknifed ahead of them on southbound I-39. A machine that big going on three inches of ice, he did everything he could. He put it in neutral, put on the brakes. He went head on because if he would have turned it, we would have either clipped the side of the semi and rolled or we would have hit the semi T-bone. So he did the best he could, I'd say. It was probably the longest 10 seconds of my life because we could have been thrown forward. It could, we had the, probably the best outcome of that worst situation. He didn't turn the bus. If we turned it all and hit it awkward, we were on the left side, so we could have gone to the ditch, rolled, and it's not a good percentage for people living when you roll. And it was just not a good situation. Then I believe a pickup, uh, some smaller vehicle hit us from the back, you know, and everybody started getting a little freaked out because they were starting to realize what was going on. Within seconds of impact, it was clear the driver needed help. Shattered windows and freezing temperatures added more danger to the already frightening situation. The students jumped in to help. Well, when I got up there, the bus driver was still pinned between, well, the steering column and the front of the bus in his seat. And you, we could see that he had a large piece of glass stuck in his right shin. They repositioned the driver, made him comfortable with blankets, and dressed his wounds. One of them had survival experience in scouting, and two of them are certified in first aid through the American Red Cross. We couldn't find anything to clip the, the bondage on, so uh, Austin took off his belt. I, he's an Eagle Scout, so he knows what to do. So I was like, okay, dude, you take over now. And he, uh, he unhooked his belt and wrapped it around into a, a tourniquet. The teenagers seemed satisfied to know the bus driver did recover and ultimately moved away. Overall, the students themselves were fortunate. Several were injured, but only in minor ways, from cuts and bruises to whiplash and a broken bone or two. For about an hour that night, they found themselves helping and supporting each other on the frigid bus as they waited for emergency help. That help commenting on how calm and mature the atmosphere was when they arrived. However, thinking about what happened has had its effect on these students. What weather does kind of make me a little bit nervous. Um, Semi-trucks make me nervous now. <laughs> Buses make me nervous now. Um, as for my perspective on life, you know, we're put on this earth for a reason. You know, be thankful for every breath that you have, and that just reinforces that. Two weeks after, I was like, right now I could be in the hospital. I could be dead. I could, I could be... I, just not in good condition at all. And I'm walking right now. I love the snow, I love the winter, but that winter just kind of, this winter kind of ruined it. I'll tell you this, um, I'm getting recertified next year. <laughs> Cause I mean, it's just shown me how, how something so little that you think n it won't ever use can be used in such a good way and rewarding way. And it's seriously like such a blessing that I did take it. Cause I almost didn't take it. So I'm like, wow, that's awesome.